In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to create a one-way slab floor in Risa Floor ES. We'll start by creating a new floor plan here, and as we open this up, we're creating a new floor. We're going to choose a concrete floor slab. I'm going to give it an elevation of 10 feet with an office default area load. We'll come back to that. I'm going to say OK, and I start off with a dialog that's asking me for a DF DXF drawing grid. I'm going to actually not do a DXF drawing grid, and I'm not going to do a drawing grid at all. I'm going to use a project grid for this. So going into the project grid, I can set my increments of my project grid in the Z direction, the horizontal project grid location there. I'm going to tell the program I want to do five increments at 18 feet, and I'm going to say generate, and I see that the program automatically generates labels for me. Uh, one through six, and I'm going to go over to the x-axis, which is my vertical project grid. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to tell the program here I'm going to do five at 20 and say generate. As soon as I have that, it generates the grids for me, and I'm going to click outside that, and I can see automatically these project grids are created for me. Next step is to create some columns. So I'm going to go and create a draw columns. And in here, I can see I can do a shape group in which the program is going to choose from a rectangular or a round shape, and it's going to design for me the shape, or I'm going to tell it explicit shape. So in mine, I'm going to use an explicit shape. I click on these three dots, and I open up a dialog that tells me I can use either a rectangular or circular column. I'm going to use an 18 inch by 18 inch column, and just say OK, and that's my explicit shape. I'm going to use 3,000 normal weight. I'll let the program use the normal design rules, and these will all be gravity for demonstration purposes. I'm going to say apply, and then I'm going to just box around the, co the project grid locations that I want to create columns. So I just box in this L shape, and I get all the columns I want, and right click to drop the tool. Next step I'm going to do is draw some beams. So these beams here, in a one-way slab, we're going to be using composite beams. And that's going to be a T-shape or an L-shape beam. Now, I can tell the program here, rectangular shape beam. Uh, I can use the same 3,000 normal weight, and the design rule will keep as a typical. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and say gravity. And the other change I need to make here is going to just say pinned at both ends. Um, and then I'm going to just say apply. And I can just now also box all of the area I want to have beams. And I'm going to box the upper area here. I'm going to do one directly point to point, And I'll click to create that uh, diagonal beam there. And I have all of my layout of most of my beams. This is a little bit of a large span. So I'm going to draw some intermediate beams. Just by clicking here across the bay, it'll break up the beam as it goes across that girder. And I'll continue to click here. So I'm going to demonstrate here that I have uh, and a row of beams going in one direction here on the lower portion. And then the upper portion here, I'm going to actually go in a different direction. So we can see how that would change the behavior. So once we have all of our beams in place, I'm going to right click and drop the tool. The next step is to add the slab. So before we add that slab, let's look at our slab definitions. This is in our data entry toolbar. I'm going to see here I have a slab two-way. Now, in this model, we're demonstrating a one-way slab. So I'm going to push Enter, and I'm going to just rename this called one-way. And the type of reinforcement here, design, is going to be instead of two-way, we're going to do one-way. Now, a one-way has a direction. A one-way means that we're going to be de designing the, uh, the, lo the beams here, and the beams are going to get loads in that direction. So we have a default direction of zero. That's OK. We'll leave that at zero for our default, and that won't work for our upper structure, but we'll change that as we get there. So 3,000 normal weight would be fine, and I'm going to change the thickness to be 8 inches. The diaphragm here is going to be rigid if we were to go over Risa 3D. I'm going to close this down, and then I'm going to start drawing my slab. So I click on the sl Draw Slabs tool here, and I'm going to choose my, cr my new slab that I just created one way. I'm going to say that one way slab there, and I'm going to say Apply. And now I can click and draw around here. So to draw a slab, you're going to just click on Point to Point. And a slab is based on the beam edge. So it's important to follow the beams as you draw. So I'm following around the edges of all these beams. And that is now going to be that beam edge is the same as my slab edge. And as I finish, you'll see that I have a green outline. That's exactly to the center line of those beams. So if I were to just render this, you'd see there's just a little bit of overlap. Um, so that's a, a little bit tight there. What I'm going to do is to offset that so that it's actually a little bit outside of those beams. 
I can go to this tool here, it's an offset slab distance, click on that, and I can tell the program two feet offset distance for the entire slab. I can say apply and click on that there. And I've got a offset distance already set for me. So now I can talk about the deck direction. Once I've got this default deck in place, we can see what that looks like. And so that's actually a slab or what we also call a deck at one point. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go over up to the uh, plot options tool and go to the slabs tab and turn on the direction of one way slab listed here. Um, also the bay outline. So each bay is going to be defined in the direction there. So we're going to say OK and we see an arrow in each bay of beams and that's the direction of the load distribution. So that works well for our lower structure. It does not work so well in our upper structure. So I can adjust that by going up to this little arrow button and that's going to be our one-way slab direction tool. I click on that and it asks me to pick a direction in the X or the Z direction. We want to change it to be the plan vertical. Um, so that's going to be parallel to the X axis and I can say apply and I can either, I can box the upper regions here so that they turn. As they turn, we can see the arrows get changed and the orange outline defines the here that I've made an adjustment to my default. So these are the defaults below and those orange outlines tells me that I made some changes to it. So I'm going to right click and drop that tool. I'm going to go back in one more time because I have a diagonal here and that diagonal I'm going to change that angle from the z-axis and I'm going to tell the program it's going to be 135 degrees. I can say apply, I can box this area here and I see that that changes also to 135 degrees and that, and that arrow it displays that for me. I can right click and I'm going to then I'm done and with modifying all of my model and I can start to run it and look at the results. So if I go over to load combinations, I can see that I have both service combinations and I have my LRFDs, concrete combinations here that I need. And so I'm going to run the model, I'm going to say solve and it's going to run through all the combinations and I get to see the results afterwards. So I zoom in a little bit, I'm going to look at here, I have design of my beams, I'm going to click on the detail button then click on the beam itself, open up a detail report. This will give me all the information of my deflection, my shear, my moment diagrams. It goes into all the reactions that I'm seeing. The code check is listed here and then beyond that it gives me the steel design. So I can see what the steel design was for the bending steel, if there's any, there's the shear steel required here and as I scroll down I get to see a T-beam shape what the analysis here was and what the design portion gives me, it tells me that the span of that T using the effective width here of 60 inches tells me what the size of the beam inside of that is and then we can close and we can see beyond that here any of the deflections. I'm going to close that and I can open up an L-shaped beam as well as described. So we have a T-shaped beam as well as an L-shaped beam. And that concludes our design of one-way slabs with composite design.